factors with regards to the issue of loan moratorium. Now, this has become a highly debated talking point right now in the country because it affects us all. It affects the common man. Remember, in the wake of the pandemic, the Central Bank of India allowed lenders to first offer a period of moratorium for three months starting from the 1st of March 2020 up to 31st of May. That has been extended to 31st of August. The aim was, of course, to provide some relief to the common man, those who have faced job cuts or, for that matter, uh, any pay cut because of the global pandemic. Now, the matter before the top court is whether this loan moratorium can be extended. If yes, under what conditions? What would be the modalities of extension? To what extent can this extension be made? Second point being, during this period of extend, during this period of moratorium, can there be an interest waiver? That is again a highly contentious matter at the moment. To what extent can there be an interest waiver? Points being made on both the sides in court with regards to this. And thirdly, there are issues of how do we resolve the entire issue of uh, loan moratorium with the petitioners now asking for a waiver of interest on the basis of invoking the National Disaster Management Act. Can that be invoked or not? We are going to address all of these issues with an expert panel. Uh, let's remember here very clearly that today the top court heard a batch of petitions seeking the interest waiver on loan moratorium that was granted by the Reserve Bank of India. The next hearing is on 10th of September. Before I go across to my guests, I would like to put things in context for our viewers for a better understanding on what was observed in court. Let's put that out clearly. It will help us have a more interesting discussion. So what did the Supreme Court say? It said that the grievance of petitioners is that they haven't been given adequate relief. So far, this is a clear observation that the borrowers and uh, have not received their due. Question is about demands of compound interest. There's no clarity. There's a lot of ambiguity right now on what happens to the interest during the moratorium period. Is that going to be waived off or not? Moratorium and penal interest can't go together because it's like one step forward and two step backwards. So therefore, the Supreme Court says these two things cannot go together. RBI will have to clarify. No account should be declared NPA for two months. So we'll also, in fact, bring in the issue of the non-performing assets. Banks should not take action against borrowers, which is coercive in nature. So the Supreme Court then borrowers. So in this context, now we are going to have let me introduce um, Patak, spokesperson of the BJP. Joining me this evening is also Govind Raj Etraj Zine. Uh, Mukesh Mohan Gupta, president of issue of interest waiver and moratorium extension and I want to go across to Mr. Vishwas I guess this evening once again Vishwas Pathak spokesperson of the BJP Govind Raj Aitraj senior journalist and founder of India Spend fact checker dot in and boom also joining us Mukesh Mohan Gupta president of MSME Ajay Bagga, market and financial expert. Very good evening to all of you. Thanks for joining us here on Mirror Now this evening. I want to open out the discussion by first, let's tackle the issue of interest waiver and moratorium extension. My question is to Mr. Vishwash Pathak. I want to first bring to your notice the submissions made in court because that is what we are, uh, you, know, uh, you know, having in context here as the immediate development that has happened today where the Solicitor General Tushar Mehta has said that the idea of the moratorium was to defer repayment to ease the burden caused by COVID and lockdown so that businesses can manage their working capital. The idea was not to waive off interest. Also, he mentions that the effort is that those who are affected by COVID and facing distress get benefit and those who are defaulters are not able to take benefit or take undue advantage. So that is very clear then uh, in terms of the government's position. But what does it mean? Does it rule out the possibility of interest waiver for the moratorium period, Mr. Patak? No, not at all. If you look at the discussions or hearing took place in Supreme Court today, which is again uh, resolved for uh, hearing on 10th of September, it clearly says that this government is uh, obligated to are committed to help 
all such trace assets, all such industries who really need uh, support from the government of India, and especially those who are uh, doing their business in very honest manner. If you are already NPA, then probably this government may not be able to help you out. But let's say before uh, declaration of the moratorium, moratorium period, hmm. if your account was standard account, then yes, and because of the stress during COVID period, such extensions can be granted. And this moratorium period can go even up to two, two years. This government okay. is open for all such relaxation for specific cases, yes. case to case. However, it can be blanket. For example, for IT industry and pharma industry, mm -hmm. there was no any stress. There was a, uh, rather those industries were flourishing in these two, three months also. So bank is also doing business. Bank also requires certain uh, kind of surety of running its business. Ultimately, bank doesn't have its own money. Money co comes from me and you as a deposit. Yes. And bank has to pay deposit uh, depositors interest on that. Also, interest on interest on that. Therefore, while waiving the interest from the bank, they have to be also very clear that whom it should be lent and whom it should not be lent. If you are a willful defaulter, probably you will not get benefit out of that. But if you are honest borrower with good track record, this moratorium period can go even up to two years, and there can be waiver of interest, waiver of interest on years also. So therefore, this is this is all getting entangled in lot of uh, you know procedural difficulties, and there is going there is a lot of ambiguity in this uh, uh, because you know the government is not making a clear commitment here, saying that yes we will give you interest waiver or no we will not. Uh, you know this is some sort of a, trying to keep it a little open, and like you said, it's not ruled out, but then there is no commitment yet. I want to bring in Mukesh, Mukesh Mohan Gupta on this because if there is no interest waiver, Mr. Gupta, what do we get? I mean, technically, what is it in terms of relief? All I'm getting is that, okay, you're not a defaulter. That's all we get because if you if you really look at the fact that the government, what, what it has submitted is technically saying that it's in no position to grant any kind of interest. All it can do is allow you to defer the payment. Now, moratorium in that sense has almost become a synonym for deferment. I mean... What, what, what is in it for me, really? It doesn't absolve me uh, from repaying. It doesn't absolve me from interest. So for the borrower, what is in it? No, so Afrida, so uh, uh, my previous uh, speaker has rightly told, see, the problem is that banking is also an industry. What they do, they accept deposit from the public and they lend the same money to the borrower. They get some interest margin out of this uh, deposit and lending. Suppose tomorrow, if the banker say that we are not able to pay the interest to the depositor, will we accept that situation? No. So the waiver of interest, I don't feel that the bankers are in a position or bankers or the government will be in a position to, to waive the interest or any installment. What, bank, what the government and Reserve Bank of India has done, they have come up with two circulars on 6th of August, you will be well aware, regarding the restructuring of the MSME loan and the resolution framework for the other loans like personal loan or the corporate loan. So my problem is, my issue is that, you know, this uh, moratorium is one thing, but the other issue should be that when this interest of the moratorium period is payable by the borrower, meaning the advice, I have seen that most of the banks are approaching the borrower that, you know, the interest for the six months from March to August, they want to debit it on the 1st of September. That, I suppose, is not possible because we all know that there is a okay. pandemic. There is a situation that where the GDP is down, our Honorable Prime Minister was also talking about these things. So, uh, so paying the interest of 12 months over a period of six months balance uh, from September to March will not be possible. So what we are supposed proposing that, you know, for this moratorium period, this interest or the installment should be repayable over a period of two years, three years, and then again giving some time as a gestation period or the moratorium period to start these installment in fact. Mm -hmm. That is the only way because if we will expect that, you know, bankers will waive our interest, then bankers will be in great difficulties. We should not demand this because if the banking system will collapse, I suppose the okay. entire economy of the country will collapse. So we should not at all expect, because we cannot expect the depositor to waive okay. off their interest. Hmm. So if they have to pay the interest, they have to earn the interest.
Right. So, uh, you know, in that sense, uh, Mr. Ajay Bagga, is, is there a lot left for interpretation? Are we getting this right? Do you agree with what Mr. Gupta just said? Uh, that there has to be a way around repaying, but in a manner that it does not hit the consumer hard. Uh, on the issue of, uh, you know, interest on interest, again, there is a, a question because what is being said right now is that the question is about the demands of compound interest in the meantime. Moratorium and penal interest cannot go together is what the court has said. Therefore, Justice Reddy has said today that RBI will have to clarify on this. What is at stake for the banks, you think? Mr. Gupta there believes that the banking system can collapse if you have these kind of luxuries of waiving off interest. How precarious is it? The government is arguing very strongly, citing that, yes, consumer interest must be protected, but the banking sector cannot be left in tatters in the bargain. Yeah, you know, you, uh, I will just explain it in very simple numbers because we are talking of 104 lakh crores. That is the loan outstanding. But I will simplify it so, uh, you know, uh, all the viewers can understand it. How does a bank run? The bank brings in mm -hmm. its own funds of about 10 to 12 rupees. It takes deposits of, say, 100 rupees. And against that, it lends uh, roughly about, uh, uh, you can say, uh, 10 times the capital it has brought. So let's take an example. Today, banks have lent out 100 rupees. Okay. Out of that 100 rupees in the last six months, as of May, 31 uh, rupees worth of people came back, I can't pay. So 31 rupees uh, people were not repaying. Then mm -hmm. once uh, May uh, phase two started, then 18 rupees of people have said, I can't pay you right now. Please give me moratorium. So what is at risk? 18 rupees. What does the bank own? They only own 12 rupees. If you wave off this 18 rupees, your banking sector will collapse. 100 rupees is put by you and me in the bank, in our savings accounts, in our fixed deposits today. More people have given money to the bank as savers than have taken money out of the bank. Out of 100 rupees that mm -hmm. the bank gets, it has to put about 22 rupees uh, with RBI as CRR and SLR, and the rest it lends out. But if all of us ask for our money back today from the bank, if all 100 rupees we ask back as savers, Bank can only return 10 to 12 rupees. That is how banking runs. So I, I frankly cannot understand this case at all. The borrowers have gone and said, it is impinging on my right to life. No one asked you to take those loans. Now, if you have an issue, government says act of God, uh, the banks are saying, uh, you know, where will I go? And we as savers down the line, we need protection. We have seen with PMC Bank, we have seen banks failing. What will happen? Now, where we are today is 18 rupees yes. is, is at risk. What I would agree with Mr. Gupta totally, we should have a very mm. liberal restructuring policy that you extend the tenure of the loans, but you charge interest okay. and you will have to charge interest on interest because you and I as depositors, we get compound interest. The bank compounds our uh, interest every three months. So where will the bank get the money if we do not compound this interest, if we don't charge interest on interest, but don't ask the borrower to pay on 1st September, restructure all those 18 rupees who are not able to pay. I would say even the 31 rupees who's not able to pay, tell them no problem, pay over the next one year. I am increasing the tenure of the loan and the interest I'm adding okay. to the principal. That is what should happen. Hmm. Over to you. Yes, I got your point, Mr. Bagga. Yes. Yes, because, you know, there is, of course, what you're suggesting has an element of compassion that you're saying liberal restructuring policy that you think should work this out. Govind Raj Aitraj, as an independent observer, how do you assess the situation? Is it really a tightrope walk for the government what do you think are the compulsions for the banks? Do you agree with the previous uh, speakers on this issue? 
Yeah, no, I like how you've uh, tagged me as an independent observer because I don't think any of us are either independent or observers. We're all part of this problem, either as uh, lender, I mean, either as borrowers or people who are trying to run businesses, which uh, in turn are linked to many other things that are happening on mm. the public policy front. So anyway, no, I think there are two points. I mean, all the previous speakers have covered uh, everything and quite uh, rightly and accurately. So I, I don't think I can add anything. I think we need to just take a step back and say, where did this start? So first of all, this is not a virus problem. This is a public policy problem. We had a lockdown, which we should have had, but we extended it beyond what the economy could bear. So the fault of uh, mm -hmm. the fault is not the banks. The banks did not say that, listen, let's have a four-month lockdown, a five-month lockdown, and therefore, uh, you know, now they're faced with all these problems of people trying to repay loans or not wanting to repay loans, and particularly the interest on the loan. So that's one part of the problem. So the second thing is, if we agree that this this uh, yes. the reason for what or the cause for what we are seeing today is not the banking sector, is really a public policy, uh, let's say a misstep, uh, uh, without blaming too much, but it is a public policy misstep, then uh, the, it is mm -hmm. clear who has to pay for it. So, I mean, it's very clear that the government has to pay for it. Now, and the government and the banking system are not the same. They are two distinct entities, and the, the government may support the banks or may not support the banks, but the banks cannot be supporting uh, uh, I mean, companies and businesses for all the reasons that have been uh, mentioned. So let me give you another uh, aspect of this uh, lockdown. You know, Crystal said, I think last yes. month or the month before, they said that successive lockdowns will have a non-linear and multiplicative effect on the economy. A two-month lockdown is more than twice as debilitating as a one-month lockdown as buffers keep eroding. So... The only lesson from this as I can take away, because the mathematical part of how mm -hmm. to fix this uh, whole, I'm not able to, I, it's not in my reach to figure out. But the only thing is that the, 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 we made a big public policy misstep by extending the lockdown, the, the, the damage of which is what you're seeing today and has obviously put okay. so much pressure on companies that they're not able to come back to even think about repaying and are asking for extensions or moratorium. So I think... The, the, the gap is belongs to those who took that public policy decision for good or bad and therefore should be in some ways be filled by them. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, very well said there, uh, Mr. Govinda Raitraj, because I think you made an argument around the fact that if the government has made a misstep, why should the consumer, the borrower today have to pay for it? You know, the burden somehow has to be taken by the policy makers. Now, also on the issue of moratorium extension, let's make it very clear here uh, what the Solicitor General has said, because this clarity is, again, important, because lot, um, uh, quite a few of you are talking about this uh, period of extension as if it is the uh, respite that the borrower is getting. So, uh, in, this, in this regard, the Centre and the RBI on Tuesday, uh, this, this week itself, had informed the Supreme Court that the moratorium period on the repayment of loans amid the pandemic is extendable by two years. But how will this really help? I want a little bit more clarity on that. Uh, I will, in fact, go back to you, uh, Mr. Govindraj, on this. Because this has been cited as a solution. Even the speakers before you are citing this as a solution. And also, uh, the Solicitor General, again, uh, speaking for the government, says we are in the process of identifying the distressed sec sectors to vary benefits as per the COVID-19 impact. So the other argument is that we will see sector-wise, we will see case-to-case. -case. So therefore, I had asked earlier also, a lot is left to interpretation. But on the point of uh, uh, extending right. it yeah. for, for two years, uh, do you agree that that can be a feasible solution that will work in so the borrower's interest? Right. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm not uh, I, I'm not a business analyst. And uh, I, I mean, my friend Ajay Baga is a much better and more qualified person to answer that. But I think what you're clearly seeing is that there is, uh, I, mean, I mean, we are trying to grapple for solutions. Uh, the, the one way to uh, any solution is to say that you extend the period of okay. uh, repayment and stagger it out. So the so the burden reduces. Uh, the other is to say that I write it off completely, mm. which obviously is not a, a solution that, that is on the table right now. The third thing is, which is uh, in some ways, again, logical, is that you say, OK, let me pick a few stress sectors, uh, maybe aviation or uh, mm -hmm. hospitality, where uh, the impact is the most and give them more, uh, okay. let's say, leeway compared to, let's say, a garment export company, which may have got uh, its machines up running and has begun doing business already maybe in the last two months. So that's the only thing to me at this point uh, as a going forward solution. These seem yes. logical, you know, uh, 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 spread out the burden and uh, try and see if you can separate mm -hmm. the ones who are the most affected from the ones who are less affected. 
very interestingly, you know, in terms of the proceedings in court, and there was a very interesting exchange which I want to quote. When Justice Call stated that these times of pandemic are not normal circumstances, something needs to be done. Solicitor Mehta says that is for the banks to answer. And to that, Justice Call responded, see, that's the problem. RBI says it's central government's uh, prerogative. The government says it's the banks. Mr. Vishwas Pathak, isn't that very convenient? Because for every other thing, the government says these are exceptional circumstances. Uh, you have made special rules for the monsoon session. For every other thing, these concessions are there. So when it comes to the loan repayment, suddenly the government does not want to give a, a, any concession. Because let's remember, and for the viewer's sake as well, there is tremendous amount of financial distress out there. People are not able to pay school fees. People are going through tremendous amount of financial stress in the Indian home. So the loan repayment issue has become a lodestone around people's necks. Mr. Pata, can the government really be that helpless? No, not at all. See, I'll tell you, if you look at the hearing, if you look at the 8th August circular, to be read with uh, 11th February circular, the efforts of the government is to help out those who are really honest businessmen and whose business is in denial in trouble. But under the garb of that, there could be various business houses who are trying to push their case also to get moratorium period. And government is trying to segregate those. See, again, if bank has to survive, then bank cannot take decisions which will be against the interests of the bank and depositors. Hmm. And in that case, compensation has to be made by the government out of our taxpayer money. Therefore, government is taking very um, cautious steps. As far as the interest con uh, issue is concerned, I think it is a very small issue. All court uh, wanted to say to the bank that can you settle at your end? And I, I am sure on 10th September, again, bank will say we cannot waive those interests because banks are obligated to pay interest on deposits and interest on interest on deposits. Therefore, interest issue will not be waived by the bank. In, if at all, it is to be waived, okay. it has to be compensated by the government. As far as government is concerned, government is prepared to lend or help out the genuine people by extending their moratorium to the extent of two years, relaxation of interest, relaxation of in, uh, installments, lots of things. I think what government is really pleading their case is for those uh, honest businessmen and those business houses are really in trouble, not for those who are already willful defaulter and trying to take benefit out of the system. But Mr. Pathak, from what we can see, the only the only concession, at least as of now, of course, this is an ongoing matter. Nothing has been settled in court yet. The next hearing is on 10th of September. So the back and forth continues. But the only thing that's pretty obvious here is that the government is more than willing to agree to a staggered payment, but no commitment on waiver of interest. The government is trading no, very to, cautiously on that. And perhaps for reasons that our other speakers are also bringing out, not to everybody as a blanket case okay, on go case ahead. to case basis. Like, I, as I told you, pharma industry, mm. IT industry, they don't require any support. Yes, but that again, they like I said, it's, it's very also. ambiguous. No, no, okay. See, therefore, yeah, the clarity has mm. to be brought in and government Mr. is going to set up the committee. Committee will decide uh, case to case basis. Aprita, I would like to add one thing here. As Mr. Pathak hmm. is referring to the sectorial... You know, my, uh, my problem as a borrower is not to understand how the government protects the banks. My problem is I need relief. I am under tremendous financial stress. So, you if, know, to, put, a, if, to, if to, to, uh, to make borrower, the consumer, the borrower, understand these issues of the banking sector, at this stage, when I'm in tremendous financial duress, is what I'm talking about, it is actually say, not my prerogative to understand all the compulsions of the government. I need some respite. I need some relief because of the uh, pandemic. Therefore, uh, therefore, all the I'm tyranny of the banks, we all know willful, how it is when it comes to loan repayment, sir. Let's face it. See, if you are a willful defaulter, then you cannot expect any benefit out of this scheme. But those who are genuine, those who are honest, they are going to get benefits out of this scheme. That is the whole point I'm trying to tell. Okay. All right. Let's 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 hear it from the other panelists. Ajay Bagga, you know, there's, there's a reason why the Supreme Court has even underlined that there should be no coercion on the part of the banks. So there is a, a you know, certain amount of acknowledgement and understanding that uh, there is a tyranny of the banks that must be reined in. Perhaps that's why these things are also being 
put out there in public domain for everyone's understanding. I want to know from you, does the bank, do the banking sector, do the banks have any elbow room? Do they have room for maneuver? Can there be a middle ground, so to speak? We'll have to do it. I'm talking very practical terms. Even before March 23rd, when the moratoriums uh, started, uh, about 9% of the bank's uh, loans were either stressed or were uh, non-performing assets, what we call mm -hmm. bad debts. Already 9%. And remember, banks have 12% uh, as the capital that they have in their pocket. So already banking sector was hugely stressed. Now with this pandemic, you know, another 18% okay. has flown through where people have not paid you for six months. What we have seen in 2008, when we did a similar exercise, 2008 to 2010, we restructured a huge amount of loans. 35% of those loans mm -hmm. eventually turned into bad loans. 65% people paid back. 35% turned bad loans. So if we just take that uh, as a benchmark, you can say that we will be adding another 6 to 8% bad loans to the banking system. If you recognize all of these today, your banking system will collapse. So in practical terms, what you have to do and what RBI is telling okay. banks to do is restructure the loan postpone the problem, give people time to earn back money. And what Govind said was a very essential part of this, because when we went into this crisis, only one third of SMEs had money uh, enough for four months of uh, expenses. One third had money only for one month, one third had money only for two months. Now we have had this for April, May, June, July, August, five and a half, six months have gone by. Uh, most SMEs are out of their working capital. Not only they need this restructuring, they need further loans also. And banks are not giving loans uh, at all. Our uh, loan growth has gone down to 5%. I'll give you one or two numbers. You know, in the truck segment, the yes, companies me, were... Yes. Yeah, okay. Can I? Let's get the MSME perspective from Mukesh Mohan Gupta. Yes, Mr. Gupta, you, over to you, your response to that. Yeah, see, um, I fully agree with Mr. Uh, Pathak that, uh, and Mr. Bhagat that, you know, uh, we cannot expect the loan waiver. And uh, I, uh, Afrida, I slightly differ with you also when you are saying that, you know, I am as a borrower in concern only what is the relaxation given to me. I am not concerned about anything. Ask from the depositor. They will say that we are not concerned whether you are giving any relaxation to the borrowers or not. I want interest on my deposit regularly. Two, three things I would like to, I suppose, through uh, this important No, channel. that's why I asked what's so the middle you, ground, which is why I asked that question. So, so I'll, I'll tell you. So as far as... Yes, carry on. Uh, as far as compound interest is concerned, uh, so we can just uh, suggest that bank may charge some subsidized rate of uh, interest as a compound interest. That is one. Another issue is that the restructuring should be some more mm -hmm. liberal. I think this is the first time that, you know, personal loans are also being put on the restructuring. The only two, three conditions are there that banks have to satisfy themselves that these defaults are due to COVID. So meaning thereby, suppose there is some government employee. I suppose he will not be able to use these... Uh, 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 restructuring or uh, 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 resolution process because they are not affected with the COVID because the salary, there is no salary cut. So right. uh, that is another issue is that MSME restructuring is very important, but there are two, three conditions that, you know, MSMEs which have total credit facilities up to 25 crore rupees, only those MSMEs are covered uh, under this uh, 6th of August Circular of Reserve Bank of India. We demand that you know all MSMEs, as per the new definition which has been announced by the Ministry of MSMEs, should be covered under this restructuring facility. Another thing is that as far as uh, you are referring about the sectorial, uh, you know, uh, sectorial problems and the uh, the solution for the different sectors, I suppose there 
Reserve Bank of India has already constituted an expert committee, report of which is expected on 5th or 6th of September, just two, three days uh, are um, left out. Uh, so we will be having a report of the expert committee. That will also be very important. Okay. Another issue is another issue is. Okay. So we'll wait for that report. We'll one, see what one, the one, Reserve one. Bank of India is suggesting in terms of solutions. I'm running out of time. I need to take a quick last word from the other guests. Yes, please finish your point, sir. No, no. Just want to say that you know, creditating has also been mandated to get this restructuring done in case of you know all large uh, corporate. I suppose this will be very difficult for the borrowers to get the credit dating at this okay. moment. So perhaps this condition. And one more thing, that after restructuring, the NPA period has been reduced right. to 30 Okay, days. Mr. I, Gupta, you are right. At least when you said that I am speaking for the borrower, I am the only voice representing the common man and the citizen today. And therefore, I'll take full liberty to speak for the citizen here. I want to ask Govind Raj Aitraj a question on going forward in terms of solution. Uh, when we talk about invoking the NDMA Act, even on that, the Solicitor General was extremely cautious when he said that the DM Act provides the government may take action, therefore it's not cast in stone. So you see, uh, there is a hesitance, a very strong hesitance on the part of the government to actually uh, provide real term relief. How do you interpret the issue of invoking the NDMA and the government kind of shirking away of this issue as well in court at least so I, you know i mean not having uh, or done law in uh, uh, in in my career or not specializing in law so let me can i if i may skip that let me respond to the problem as i see the solution is so so what do we do today right so this is uh, it's a, it's a it's a double cash 22 or a triple cash 22 where you got everyone in a jam and getting out of this jam because there are historical problems remember we came from eight quarters of a slowdown into a lockdown you know so things are bad because they were already bad or have got worse so it's not it's not an easy thing to get out of the only thing that we can do is to ensure okay. that we all get back to work uh, we ensured mm -hmm. that all the machines uh, are running all the businesses are uh, moving, people are working, we are uh, creating, manufacturing, serving, exporting, if we can. I mean, this is a global problem after all. That's the only thing that, to my mind, can at least, uh, you know, stop the problem uh, from getting worse. If we don't get this economy going up again, our problem will only keep multiplying, as I described earlier. So to me, that's the larger solution mm -hmm. that we should be focusing on. This is something that is not going to get, is not going to be easily solvable because that's the, that's how intricate it is. Uh, uh, between the banks and the borrowers and the uh, uh, small enterprises yes, and loan takers. Absolutely. So, so I mean, so let's work on that. But, but as a larger public policy point of view, let's get uh, let's get this mm -hmm. country moving again. Let's get this economy humming again. Absolutely, and and that's the right note, perhaps, to end this discussion. I'm really glad we had a very healthy exchange of ideas. I would like to thank all my guests, but I also want to point out here that, yes, the RBI is still working on a resolution plan and the restructuring plan. It's an ongoing matter in court. Nothing is settled yet, and therefore, this is a fluid situation. But, yes, the important part here is that the borrowers need some respite. There is a huge clamor, therefore, for waiver of interest. The government is non-committal at the moment, but we must again understand that there are compulsions on the part of the banking institutions as well, which our experts have very eloquently uh, explained to us. The idea is to minimize the collateral damage and yet protect the interest of the taxpayer and the citizen. That's the larger idea and that is why people are elected to power to manage that, to give us the desired outcome and minimize the collateral damage. It's up to you how you do it. That's what you're elected for. We leave it at that. Thanks for watching the Urban Debate this evening.